Welcome everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. Now, this is a tier list video, as you have probably read from the title. And I think you guys know that these types of videos, they can be, you know, just a, just quite, you know, just a little bit controversial, you know, just a little bit, you know, not, not too controversial, but still a little bit controversial. So before we begin, let's establish some crucial context. This is a comprehensive tier list. It's made at the start of patch 3.7. And this means we are right now, during the filming of this video, at the very end of the nation of uh, Sumeru, which is the nation of Dendro, which introduced a lot of very significant meta-shifting and meta-defining characters. And obviously, the element of Dendro, which was an enormous release for the game in general. This list is designed to evaluate the value of each character right now, as of patch 3.7, and as of the near future. Uh, and this takes basically each character to a player's account, taking into consideration their unique abilities, versatility, and overall contribution to gameplay experience. However, it's important to note that the tier list is not set in stone. With the impending release of the Nation of Hydro Fontaine and the continuous efforts of the developers to push the gameplay of Genshin forward into new directions, character placements are obviously going to be subject to change. It's crucial to understand that Genshin Impact is a dynamic and ever-changing game, so, so when I put a character in a specific tier, that placement in of itself, it's an approximate placement of the range where I think that character lies and not a perfect placement. So while the general placement of characters can be considered approximate, the true value of a character lies in their synergy with your account specific needs. Team compositions, personal preference, and the desired play style all play significant roles in determining uh, which characters will be the most valuable to your account. Now, I'm going to conclude this introduction and say it's crucial to keep an open mind and adapt to ever-evolving nature of Genshin Impact. Uh, the update that is going to bring Fontaine just in a couple of patches, 4.0, is on the horizon. And it promises new characters and adjustments that will undoubtedly reshape the meta of Genshin. So, without further ado, let's get into the tier list. And I hope this doesn't go too bad. Alright, so this is what our tier list is going to look like. This is the layout. Uh, I'm going to get this out of the way. I have no desire to talk about this character. If uh, if you play her, more power to you. I am not interested in discussing what she does. Uh, as for the rest of the cast, I'm going to say this right now. It is virtually impossible for me to talk about characters in depth. This video would be literally two hours long because of how many characters there are. How many different scenarios, how many different applications exist for every character. So please take this with a grain of salt, at least a slight grain of salt. It is quite literally impossible for me to mention every single application for every single character. We're going to skim through them. My placements, when I place a character, let's start with Ayaka. Let's say I place Ayaka here. This is not my placement, but let's say I place her here, right? My placement, it is it, due to how diverse Genshin is as a game, due to, to how diverse the accounts of players are, and due to how many variables there are, different variables, it is impossible for me to make a tier list where a character is going to be precisely within the exact percentage location where he has to be, or she has to be, within like an error range of 0.01%. That is impossible. So when I put a character somewhere... Don't take it as like an absolute placement. Take it as more of an approximate estimation of the general location in a tier list where this character is going to lie. So if I put Ayaka in A tier, which is where I think she is, she is a very good cryo DPS unit. And that is pretty much it. There isn't more to it. I'm not saying that Ayaka is, cannot be S tier in some situations. She can be S tier in some even rarer situations. She can be S plus. That being said, overall, I think that she can, she is an A with an argument that can be made for like all the other tiers around A. And something else I'm going to say right now, horizontally, this tier list is not, in fact, I'm probably going to have it, uh, I'm going to have like a text that says this on the tier list itself. This tier list is not, and I repeat, not ordered horizontally. 
I do not care about horizontal placement. It's honestly due to how many characters exist within, within Genshin. Even if I tried, it's impossible for me to get it correctly. So tiers exist. This is a vertical tier list. No horizontal placement. Albedo, C tier. Geo is a dog shit element. Uh, Amber, she can she gets giga power crept right now. She is not that good. Uh, and her only application is basically an LOG bot. There are better LOG bots in terms of other elements. In terms of Pyro, Amber's kit is an ancient kit. She needs a complete rework. Her kit is super bad. Other than that, um, I guess she's just a D-tier. She's honestly notorious for being one of the worst characters in the game. Barbara is a healer. She brings. She doesn't bring that much to the table besides healing. She can use TTTS, but so does every other Catalyst user. Or so can every other Catalyst user. I've played Barbara a lot. She's one of my most used characters in the game. That being said, because I've played her a lot, I know that she lies in C. Beidou, absolutely good uh, sub off-field sub-DPS. And her ult does the most possible damage that you can reach against two targets. That being said, she's still good against more than two targets, and she's still decent against single target just because when you're on Beidou, her teams generally have answers to single target as well. Stuff like Fischl. Uh, so moving on, I honestly don't want to talk about every single character for too long. Again, in detail, this is going to be an insanely long tier list. In fact, you know what? I'm going to save everyone time and uh, put these characters where they should be. Multiple okay teams, and he has one team that is exceptionally good, which is the international team. And in that team, because of how good that team is, and how cheap that team is to build, Tartaglia himself is super good. And outside of that team, he works. He's not as good, but he works, and he's in one of the best 5-star characters that you can pull. He's very good. Uh, also, his weapon is Polar Star, which is one of the best weapons in the entire game as a raw pull, so that adds just a tiny little bit of... Uh, this is not a weapon tier list, but... If you want to mention his weapon, that's also... Plus that he has going for him. Diona is B tier. She's an okay character. You can run her. She has a she's a super flexible character, but she's not outst outstandingly good in any one specific thing. At least right now. <clears throat> you can make an argument for her in A tier, by the way. Again, as I said, if I put her in B, you can argue for A. That sure, I can believe you. Fischl, A tier. Fischl, everyone, I. Uh, let me get Yaimiko. Yaimiko, same thing as Fischl. Like, these two characters, they were always good. Dendro made them even better, but they were always good units. Mona, uh, B tier. Ganyu, A tier. In fact, let me look for all the A tier characters, because I think A tier is such a simple... It's such a simple tier to list, because... A tier, in my opinion, is the easiest tier to list because they are all really solid characters that are not broken but really good. So, yeah, as I said, nothing too crazy with A tier. Let me just put all the characters that are in A tier where they belong. Uh, again, horizontally, I do not give a shit. This is not a horizontal tier list. Uh, you can. It doesn't matter where they are on the tier. It's just within the tier itself that matters. Raiden is S. I think I will talk about her just when I finish tier A tier. Uh, what else is an A tier? I guess you can argue for... Mm, I'll talk about Nilo later. You can argue for Baizu. Uh, you can argue for Tormari. Tormari is basically A tier. I think he is. Uh, Ayato is S. I'll talk about I I'll talk about Ayato and Raiden right after I'm done with A tier. In fact, I think that Kokomi is also A tier. I think that uh, so is Yao Yao. Faruzan as well. You know what? Let me bring Farzan back down. I think there is some stuff to talk about her. Uh, what else is in A tier? You can argue for Hazel. I guess you can make an argument. You can make an argument for Hazel in B or A. Okay? I think he works in both. He has multiple playstyles and he 
he is decent in every single playstyle. Also, he has the highest Animo Nuke in the entire game, if you care about that. What else is A tier? Let me see really quickly. I guess Venti. Venti is not as bad as people think he is right now. He's fine. And in terms of content where he works, he's the best in slot. Kuki Shinobu is... She's S, but I don't want to put too many characters outside of A because I'm going to have a lot to talk about. Uh, Goro is... Not now. No, 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 no. All of this is... Yeah, I think we're good. Honestly, the last A tier that I probably have might... Yeah, no, I think we're good. So all of these characters are in A tier, are very solid characters. They are above average. You pull them. If you like them, you play them. They're going to be valuable. Invest in them. They are good characters. Uh, I will briefly mention Wander and Ito. Wander and Ito, especially Ito. Geo is a dog shit element. Geo is a bad element. Arataki Ito is not really a Geo character, though. The reason I think Arataki Ito is good is because he forsakes any elemental reactions. He is basically just brute force damage. Buff him. He's a hyper carry. Buff him, put all of your buffs on him. He will do damage. He will clear content. Same thing with Wanderer. Obviously, their playstyles are different, but in concept, they do very similar things. Now, Kuki Shinobu, basically, same argument as Toma. Uh, both characters were fine before Dendro. Dendro significantly elevated them. Kuki Shinobu is one of the best Hyper Bloom units in the game. So is Raiden, but Raiden is a complete... I will talk about Raiden. Uh, she's a healer. She can double dip into Elemental Master for healing and damage, which is very good. In fact, I think she triple dips. Let me tell you why. She gets Electro Damage bonus from her uh, Elemental Mastery. She gets healing from her Elemental Mastery. And then she gets transformative reaction damage from her elemental mastery. So all in all, also, never mind, also amplifying reaction damage because uh, aggravate. All in all, Kuki is a very, very solid unit to pull and play. Even at C0, by the way, Kuki at C0 is very much usable. And she is also flexible outside of Dendro, where you can run her with tenacity of the Millilith. And you can also sometimes build her as an... Uh, Sub DPS if you want, in some situations. Ayato, uh, basically the same argument as Child. He is a very, very good pull. Words cannot describe how flexible this unit is. And I know that people bat chest this a lot. I know that a lot of people say, <laughs> make a meme out of how flexible Ayato is. But he really is a super flexible unit and he's really versatile. So pulling him is almost never a bad idea because... It's easy to find a use for Ayato. It's not difficult. In addition to the fact that Ayato himself, if you build him as a hyper carry, he does a lot of damage, and I mean a lot of damage. Uh, he's a Hydra unit. Hydra is one of the best elements in the game. Probably with Fontaine, it's going to become the best element in the game. But we're going to leave that for Fontaine. This is We're not taking Fontaine into consideration right now. Uh, additionally, he is also... He double scales with HP and attack. He's super easy to build. Like, again, this guy, Ayato is really good. He has many weapon options. Same thing with Kuki. Same thing with Raiden, except Raiden is probably... With Raiden, here's the thing with Raiden. She is a hybrid between an offensive support and a DPS. At C0. This improves at C2. And it improves significantly at C3. And her weapon is obviously engulfing lightning. If you have it, it makes her even better. That being said, I have engulfing lightning. I have C3 Raiden. Uh, I always knew what C3 Raiden is going to be before pulling her. That being said, a misconception that I notice a lot in Genshin is that people assume that C3 Raiden is this godlike unrivaled DPS that's gonna one-shot every single thing on the map just by having her on your team. C3 Raiden is very good. C3 Raiden is not, like, be beyond Bennett levels of broken. She's fine. She's good. Very good, in fact. 
Ka-Ching is a very balanced unit. You can argue for A tier, you can argue for B tier. I think B tier because, again, B tier means good. B tier is not bad. Goro. You know what? I'm going to do this. Goro. Where is it? Faruzan. Sarah. Mika. And Yunjin. These characters are exceptionally good at what they do. And at C6, they become even more exceptionally good at what they do. But what they do is, as you all know, super limited. And because what they do is super limited, they are outside of their niche, not very flexible, and sometimes they have almost no use outside of their niche. So they are basically good characters. I'm going to put them right in the middle because of how exceptional they are in their niche, but how underwhelming they are outside of their niche. Klee is Klee. Uh, her playstyle is not very well streamlined in Genshin. She needs more... Uh, she basically needs more tools to make her work. I think that... Honestly, you can argue that she's good. You can make the argument. I, I'm going to put Klee, Yanfei, and Diluc in the same tier. I think they. I think of them almost the same. Lisa is... You can make an argument for B. You can make an argument for A. I think she's A. Dendro significantly improved her. She can work as a buffer. She can work as a raw sub DPS. She can also work as a main DPS on field. I think Lisa is a fine unit. In fact, Lisa is a good unit. Not as good as Kaya, but she's a good unit. Ningguang... <sighs> Okay, Ningguang is not good, but it's not Ningguang's fault. Ningguang's design is good, her damage is good for what she can do, but Ningguang has no artifact sets, Ningguang has no good supports besides Bennett and maybe Zhongli, and she has, like, Ningguang is a good unit, but has nothing going for her. And that's the issue. If Ningguang had her element is bad, her supports are not ideal, has no artifact sets, and she scales with the complete opposite stat of what other Geo characters scale with, which is either defense and I guess Zhongli scales with HP, but yeah. Like right now, as of 3.7, Ningguang, until Geo gets a rework, Ningguang is going to be C. Like either Geo gets a rework or gets a significant buff. Exact same thing with Noel. Chi Chi is Chi Chi. Uh, in fact, you know what, Chin Yan too. Uh, anyone else? I guess Dia as well. Yeah. So these characters are like, eh, yeah, you know what, I'm going to take it. I, I take it back. After further thought, I think Dia is top of C. In Fontaine, maybe she will go up. Maybe she will remain where she is. And I highly doubt she's going to go down. Again, in Fontaine, Dia's placement might change. For now, as of the time of recording of this video, she is underwhelming, to say the least. Uh, physical is a dead element. Razor can be an electro driver. That being said, there are better electro drivers than Razor is. You can clear with him. You can play. You can play any character on this tier list, and you can clear with them. Bro, put any. Listen to me. Put any character on this tier list with Bennett, Singcho, and Kazuha, and they're gonna clear. I guarantee you. In fact. Put them in the team and don't even swap to them. Bennett, Singcho, and Kazuha are gonna do the they're gonna do the job for you. But yeah. Razor physical is a dead element. Like I said physical is a dead element. Physical is not an element. But like physical as a concept right now, it's dead. Same thing with Eula. I'm gonna put Eula in B. She's good, I guess. She's not uh too bad. I mean, she's good. Eula is good. You can play her and clear with her, but the problem... Uh, you know what? I'm going to make a separate video about Eula. I think Eula has the potential to be super good as she was back in the days. That being said, because of how neglected physical is as a uh, damage mechanic, I don't think Eula is currently as good as she could be. I'm going to skip Xiao for a minute. I'm going to put Shangling in S. Everyone knows why Shangling is good. Please don't make me explain it. Same thing with Nilu. Everyone knows why Nilu is good. Please don't make me explain it. 
Okay, let's talk about Chow. I'm gonna rant for a little bit. When I see people making tier lists, this is where they put Chow. And I'm not even joking. This is where they put Chow. And this, some people even put him like over here, which completely blows my mind. I don't know what the hell these people are doing. Maybe they're playing with broken keyboards. Maybe they're playing with their mouse on their feet. No idea. Xiao is nowhere near as bad as, may as people make him sound. In fact, I will be the first person to go completely against like the popular <laughs> misconception. And I'm going to say this. I have cleared every single abyss since patch 1.3 with Xiao. Xiao is an S tier unit. And let me explain. Hold up. I know, I know, I know. I get this. Let me explain, please. When you play Xiao, when you pull Xiao, if you're pulling Xiao and expecting him to be a flexible, he does have some flexible teams. Again, I don't want I do not want to get into them for the sake of this video's length. Talking about his main playstyle as a hyper carry, hyper carry main DPS. If you pull Xiao, you build him and you invest your resources, you dump your resources into him. You level up his talents, you level up his artifacts, you farm, do not farm Vermilion, but if you want, you can farm Vermilion. It's an option. There are other options, such as the... Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's the same domain with the... Uh, it's basically a des the one that you get the Scaramouche set for. The artifact set for Scaramouche, same domain. It's basically slightly slightly worse than Vermilion. Uh, you can also farm... Uh, let me see. Two piece, two piece of Anemo damage uh, and Anemo damage or Anemo damage and attack. Many options. Ideally, you would go Vermilion. If you do not want to farm Vermilion, obviously that's fine and it's very understandable. That being said, I do have to say, if you have Xiao and Ayato, Vermilion starts to have more value because Echo of an offering is also Ayato's best in slot. I know it has some problems in high ping, but we're not taking ping into consideration for the... If we take ping into consideration for this tier list, this is going to be hell. So we're not talking about ping into... And when I say ping, I don't mean Madam Ping, I mean ping as in your internet ping. Uh, again... Xiao, there is... Listen, he's not the best DPS for every situation. But he is a good DPS and a usable DPS in almost every situation. And I actually mean this. I've cleared every single Spiral Abyss with Xiao. And listen, if you're someone right now watching my video and you're like, what the hell is happening? In fact, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave on the right side of uh, this video. I'm going to leave a question and say, if you think Xiao is bad, please let me know why in the comments. Because I genuinely have no idea why people think Xiao is bad. He's way better than what most people say. And I've played this character so much. I'm going to leave this. Now, here's the thing. Listen, his constellations, they're hot garbage. I, I agree. Xiao's constellations are super bad. Like, only his C1 and C6 are good. Everything else is hot garbage. But eh, his C... I believe it's his C3. His C3 is improved by his C6, but, like, that's a different topic. Let me know in the comments why you think Xiao is bad if you think Xiao is bad. Please. I actually have no idea. And on the left-hand side, I'm gonna leave a bunch of disclaimers. Zhongli is uh, Zhongli is fine. His his element is hot garbage. He transcends his element though, so he's okay. Sayo is good. Uh, Kole is good. Dory is good. She has multiple teams. They're obscure, but they're, she, Dory is not as bad as people think. Sino is good. Did I read Kaching? Yeah, I read, I did. Uh, Candace is good at C six. Before C six, she's super meh. Uh, if you have her at C6, she's like over here or over here, but I'm not going to assume that people have C6 Candace. If you have her at C6, you can make an argument that Candace is higher. If you don't, she's probably here. Uh, Layla is good. Alhatham is S tier. 
In fact, let me say this. Elhatham is not only the best DPS in terms of Dendro, he's also probably the best DPS in the game. Main on-field DPS. And this will probably stay consistent even in Fontaine. Elhatham's uh, damage is super, super high. It's consistent. He is a punishing character. He's punishing to play, but if you play him correctly, he's very good. Kave is hot garbage. Honestly, you can put him over here. I don't care. Uh, Kirara is a good unit. I think she is... Honestly, Kirara is A tier. She is alright. And that is pretty much the entire tier list. Do I have any closing statements? Yes, I do. Again, I'm gonna go back to my Shao rant. I apologize. Shao, if you're going to build him, if you're a free-to-play player, get Blackcliff uh, Polearm, is it called? Yeah, Blackcliff Polearm. If you're not free-to-play, Jade Winged Spear, straight up, best in slot. Otherwise, Staff of Homa. Basically, every crit 3-star, uh, sorry, every crit 4-star weapon, or every crit 5-star weapon, or any 5-star weapon in general, besides uh, the only 5-star weapon that does not work on Shao, uh, Polearm, is basically the Skyward Spine. That's it. Other than that, give him a good weapon, level his uh, talents, level his uh, artifacts, his... He's basically the perfect DPS. Not like a DPS that essentially is going to be the best in slot in every single situation, but he works in almost every single situation. He is very good. And if you disagree, please let me know in, down in the comments. I have no clue why people think he's like B tier or C tier. Uh, other than that, again, placements are fluid. You can make arguments depending on the constellation of the character. That being said, even at C6, characters do not tend to move too far from their placement. Like, for example, let's say C6 Yaimiko. C6 Yaimiko wouldn't be, like, over here. She would be at the top of S tier, right? Maybe in some situations she would be S+, plus, but... Realistically speaking, she's going to be around A tier. Same thing with every single character. So, this was the video. I looked into the uh, full footage, and it's around 15 minutes of footage. So I'm probably going to have a lot of editing and cutting out to do. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that uh, at least the tier list was around the level of your expectation. Obviously, no, no tier list is going to be perfect. As a closing statement, I want to say this. Uh, usually in tier list videos, people tend to skip to the end. Which is... It's not really a problem, but at the same time... If they don't have, if if people who skip to the end, if they do not have enough common sense to understand that there is generally always an argument for the placement of a character, things are t tend to not be normal. Or sorry, things. I'm tired. Things tend to not be uh, random. Then my life would be much easier. But I will probably not be making any tier list until probably patch 4.3 moving forward. Because I do not expect any major, major changes until patch 4.3. And yeah. Again, placements are approximate. They are not absolute. And the tiers within are not... Uh, they're, we're not ranking stuff horizontally. And that is pretty much it. I hope that you all have a great rest of your day or night. And take absolute care. I'll see you all in the next time.